little. He got it though. And see, he's got it all the way in. Yeah, that's how they normally do. See, that's that's what you're normally looking for right there. And he swallowed it, but. Ready? Yep. I'm here with Kevin Van Dam. Got him. <laughs> Just like that. A little keeper. That is cool. See, and he—I mean, he got it the whole way. That's how—that's how they normally do it, and he blasted it pretty good too. You know, I mean, that's. <laughs> That's Same as last time, trained by the best. Yep. So, you know, the thing about these is um, they make, it's the sound, and they're very territorial, and, you know, you want to use a color that's that's kind of natural, but visible. So, like, if the water's a little more stained, I may use that bone with the orange belly, yep. you know. You're imitating, like, a wounded bluegill or something. It's just, they don't like it being near them. They're very territorial this time of year. They're chasing bluegill off their beds and things anyway, so... A popper can be real good. You can see this is one I used in practice here. I bend the hooks completely over yeah. so you can't catch one with it, you know, because you can see every one come up and get it. So it's pretty good to do. And, and they come in a couple of sizes. So the big one, it's got a good rattle, makes a lot of noise. You can you can bloop it real loud. The small ones, um, you know, it's much subtler, you know, and that, that's a natural shad pattern. Yeah. And this one, you know, very little sound to it. And just, they really walk. And the key is that feather tail, that chicken feather. So when you pull it forward, that, that tail collapses and then it opens back up when it slows down. So it's kind of, you know, the tail's always, and that, and that is key when they're real skittish and so that, that'll they'll come up there and just take the back of it. They'll just eat that tail on it. And it really helps the bait walk real well. So, you know, when it's real slick and calm and clear, you want that, that quiet, subtle little popper. And when it's a little choppy or the water's a little stained, that's when you throw that little bit bigger size. But they're deadly this time of year, and especially when you got a lot of targets in the water like these, you know, cypress trees and boat docks and things like that. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, I throw them on a, a, a smoke bait caster, a high speed reel, and you want to use, you know, like a medium action rod, something with a lot of tip. You make them a little underhand roll cast, you, can, you know, we're throwing them up under the docks. And, you know, I love to fish them under overhanging willow trees and bushes and things like that. The bass will get wherever there's a little bit of shade and a lot of times, and, and it's something that you can do all day long. You don't have to just, um, you know, right, yeah. So it's it's one of those things, or a cloudy, windy day or something like that. They'll, they'll get up there and they'll bite them when it's slick, calm, and high bright skies too, this time of year. Yep, and preferences with lawn? Uh, I always use monofilament for these. It's the uh, really the only thing I use mono for anymore. Yep. And I'll throw like 17 pound, a little larger diameter, it's more buoyant. It stays on top. It's very forgiving, and uh, you know, it just for for a popper, it's the it's really still the way to go. Cool. Thank, Thank you very much. Yeah.